Once again, it is a pleasure welcoming everyone to the Washman Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement. The Washman Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement is the evangelistic arm, voice of the last days ministry. The term Catholic, what is saying in the ministry's name, is used in its original and proper sense. And in that sense, the word simply means universal and for all. So we are saying that the Washman Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement is for all. Now the program you are watching is the one that we call the Charismatic Hour. The Charismatic Hour. During the Charismatic Hour of the Watchman, the Lord deals with the people's sicknesses and diseases and all the seen and unseen circumstances that make life uncomfortable. And that is in keeping with the threefold ministry of Jesus Christ. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 4, I read of the threefold ministry of Jesus Christ. In verse 23, and Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness, and all manner of disease among the people, threefold. Preaching the kingdom, and teaching all the tenets, and everything that the people needed to be taught about. And so the charismatic hour is a time of uh, fulfilling the third aspect of the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ. The charismatic hour of the watchman can be illustrated with God's arrangement of old as recorded in the Gospel according to St. John. The Gospel according to St. John, I'm reading from the fifth chapter. John chapter 5, reading from verse 1. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there was a Jerusalem, by the sheep market, a pool. Sheep market means sheep gate, a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue, Bethesda, having five porches. In this lay a great multitude of important folk, of blind, halt, without waiting for the movement, moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water, stirred the water. Whosoever then first after the troubling, the stirring of the water, stepped in, was made whole. Or whatsoever disease he had. This was an arrangement of God. And the ministry of the watchman, God has made this arrangement to take care of the third aspect of the ministry of Jesus. So at every charismatic hour, now the Spirit of God moves through the Word of God. And then the power of the Lord now comes upon the people to heal and to do fantastic things, indelible things in the lives of the people. Now, there is need for me to remind all washman folks watching this program as well as all others who are just coming in contact with us of the 17 point declarations the Lord made between the 17th day of July 2019 through to the 20th day of July. You remember that 17 July 2019 happens to be 
75th birthday of the man speaking with you. And the Lord made declaration between that day and the uh, 20th. And the declaration is titled The Leap Declarations. And uh, 17 point leap declarations. I will read the leap declarations for us all and for the benefit in particular of those that are listening for the first time. The leap declarations are as follows. The Lord must take back his church from the world and Satan. It will be proven that he has not and cannot cede the world or his church to Satan as it appears presently. The sick church must be taken out of the world and the world taken out of her. Judgment must begin first in the house of God as predicted earlier. The fifth point Come men, sinners in shepherd's clothing, all the self-called, the men called, the ones called by feedy lookers, the ones that the things of this life for the end has called, as well as the anointed through sin. Take note of that, anointed through sin. In the course of our broadcast, in the course of time, we are going to bring you information, glorious information, fantastic information, insightful information as to the fact that there are people that have been anointed through iniquity. When that time comes, you will hear things that will be amazing to you. It says in the declaration, and all will be identified, humiliated, and disgraced. The hitherto bypass, neglected, and forgotten cardinal experience of genuine regeneration, cardinal experience, foundational experience of the Christian and the wayfaring person, the person that is saying, I'm going to heaven, the person that is saying, I'm a Christian, you must have this uh, foundational experience indispensable, non-negotiable, but meanwhile bypassed, neglected, or forgotten. And then the sister to it is called sanctification, which leads to holy living. And that acts like uh, the visa that admits one into heaven at the end. These will be resurrected according to the declaration of the Almighty God and placed on the front burner once more. The heater to confuse or scandalize will receive clarification as to what true Christianity is. Meanwhile, there are very many people that are confused because of what they see, because of the obnoxious things that happen, because of uh, the confusing things they see and the scandalous things that they see and hear. Now, but the Lord says, it's time that such people will receive clarification as to what true Christianity is. Now, that's this point. Every line of the Holy Bible will be proven true to the letter and walking wonders. Outstanding blessings must be realized so the joy of faith could be fulfilled as promised. Multitudes will leap over those heated to stubborn obstacles and into their expected ends. The traumatized jobs of the present church will metamorphose into triumphant jobs as of old. Are you there and you appear to have been traumatized and you are saying, I am a job or a kind of job? I want to inform you that this is the time that God wants to make job out of jobs. That is, you know that Job had to phases in his life. The one phase was troublous. The one phase was terrible. The one phase was hellish. The other phase was heavenly. 
The long gazetted worldwide awakening, church restoration, and revival must commence and continue and climax. It had to horrible, through sour marriage relationships will turn honorable, sweet once more. What is your experience? Meanwhile, might be that instead of marriage being honorable, it is horrible. Instead of it being even a thing of enjoyment, it's a thing that brings sorrow all the time. God is letting to do fantastic things as we begin the series on that. All those who buy into declarations where war, good warfare, change their circumstances, succeed, and are beyond their imaginations. Those bedrocks of Christian love and oneness among the brethren must spring up and flourish once more. Now hear this. God's jewel, the rapturable church, must emerge, progress, and be raptured shortly. And then there is this uh, one, the 17th, all the likes of the first, the second, and the third race, the oppressors, the haughty, the arrogant, the Nebuchadnezzar, the Belshazzar, the brutal, the despots, the merciless, and all those that manifest impunity. The Lord is saying he will welcome them to the humiliation program of the Almighty. Now, this is about the lip declarations that the Lord gave to us. Why we are there titled the lip declaration? They were titled the lip declaration because by the mechanisms of these declarations, all who hook to them are sure to leap. L-E-A-P. They are sure to leap into incredible but real experiences with God Almighty. They are sure to leap from trauma into triumph. They are sure to leap from grief into glory. They are sure to leap from death into life. They are sure to leap from sorrow into joy. And they are sure to leap from crisis into comfort. This is not fanciful talk. This is not some ideal thing that is good, standard, but is not really achievable. Something that you put as a yardstick, but it's not really achievable. Now, that's not something like that. This is real thing that God wants to achieve because with him, there is no impossibility. Now, this particular charismatic hour broadcast will address only one aspect of the lip declarations. What aspect? The aspect that says every line of the Holy Bible will be proven true to the letter. God is said to prove that every line of the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation is true to the letter. Meaning what? That what is written there is true. What can be deduced rightly from them all is true. Examples that can be taken from them all will work. Inferences that are taken rightly from each one of them will work. Prayers made on each one of them or on the basis of each one of them, God will make them to work. That's what that line is saying. Now we shall proceed to the first segment, which is men ministering to God. That is, singing praises and making melody in our hearts to the Lord. For want of time, we're going to be brief. The song that I've been selected for this segment is a song that is titled Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise. <laughs>
now pray in preparation to God ministering to the sons of men. Bow down your head in prayer and say something to the Lord, something reasonable for that matter. Pray. Eternal Father, we thank you. Thank you because of your goodness and mercy. Thank you because of your love and kindness. Thank you because of the cross of Calvary. Thank you because of Jesus Christ, the word of God personified. Thank you because of the word of God, that the written word that we have in our hands. Thank you because of the spirit of God that maketh us understand your word. Thank you because of what you have scheduled even to do with this charismatic hour broadcast. In the lives of the people, everyone that is watching, everyone that is participating fully, everyone that is participating really, Lord in heaven, distance is not a barrier, eternal rock of ages. You have power, power that moves from this location to another location. Blessed Redeemer, in the day of the centurion when he came to Jesus, he was uh, talking about his servant, and then the Lord Jesus Christ promised he was going to come to him, but he said, speak the word, because there is no barrier. I'm a man in authority. Speak the word, and your word will go forth and heal my servant. And that was exactly what happened. Eternal rock of ages, as the word is spoken, even through this uh, charismatic uh, broadcast, that word is life. That word giveth life. That word contains, uh, even as it were, the particles of the spirit. And therefore, it will give life unto the hearers. Therefore, it will heal the hearers. Therefore, it will resurrect the dead, the spiritually dead. Precious Father, thank you because I know that you've answered. Go ahead and do what you want to do. And let no man restrain you because you cannot be restrained. Lord, I want to thank you because you cannot be successfully hindered. Blessed be God forever. We have done our lot, and you want to do your lot. We have our ears open, wanting to hear what the Lord wants to say. And then as we hear the Lord in glory and act, Lord, we are sure that you yourself will act. You will usually play your ball. The ball cannot remain in your court. Once we play it back to your court, it cannot remain there. You will play it back. Thank you very much because you are going to play it back. It are magnified now and forever. Bless every individual, all the watchman folks, and all other folks that are watching Precious Father, they did broadcast. And then let them all come under the power and the spirit of the Lord at this point in time. And I believe that you have answered. And this is what is going to happen. Thank you for answer to prayers. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. And I hear the people saying everywhere, amen. amen. Now, as I've already told you, that we are talking on the issue, one of the lip declarations which the Lord made. And he says this time around that Every line of scripture will be proven true. Every line of scripture will be proven true. It is not as though they have not been true, no. But you know that there is always a season for something. There is always a time for something. Now, over the years, it appears that the devil has uh, uh, been in charge, but not totally in charge. He has uh, tried to tackle the whole world, to tackle them down, brought in a lot of mesmerizing uh, things. And then the day is filled with corruption. The day we are living in is filled with every manner of sin, with unfriendliness, with crisis, with commotions, with hatred, with uh, people killing people, and then spilling blood. And it does not mean anything. And a lot of crisis with a tsunami from the kingdom of darkness. But get what? 
It's usual with God to allow his enemy to go full throttle before he takes over. To ask me, how do you know and why did you say that? Did they not, not know that the devil went inside the serpent now to deceive the woman, to eat the fruit that should not be eaten? The Lord knew. And now, could he not have prevented that and stopped it? He could. But now, the Lord is not such an individual. He has men not as robots. Men are supposed to take a full responsibility. They have to use their minds. God does not force you to belong to him. He will draw you, but he will not force you. And then, but because he knows that after that, the devil had done the damage that he was going to prepare a recovery. And so, when he finished the damage, then the announcement came. And the announcement is this. You have used a woman to do this damage. I am going to use the seed of the woman to undo your damage. And eventually, the Lord Jesus Christ came and then undid the damage that Satan did. Satan made man to be a strength unto God in the beginning, through Adam. But through the second Adam, Jesus Christ, at what promised, even after that incident, now the second Adam, Jesus Christ, now returns man unto God. And what a simple thing he used to do that. Now, that's that about God. Now here, we have the situation on ground. The situation is uh, contrary to what any person would want, to, uh, would want to accept. But in the circumstance that we are in, the Lord has decided to show that every line of scripture is true. Now listen to me. What do we mean by every line of scripture? God wants to prove them true. From Genesis through to Revelation, if you are talking about all the lines from Genesis to whatever, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and then the history books, and then the wisdom books, Psalm, Proverbs, and then the prophets, and then the gospels, and then the letters, and then Revelation, every line of scripture is true to the letter. God wants to make it so. Wants to let every person that is a child of God, wants to let every person that has run to him to experience the truthfulness, the genuineness of every line of scripture. Now, that is what he is said to do. And then draw your ears and listen to it. Listen to me attentively. It is not good that uh, somebody is always asking for fish from another person. They say that it is better that you teach the person how to catch fish instead of all the time giving the person some piece of fish. And what the Lord wants to do through this uh, telecast is to show us how to catch the fish using the word of God. Every line of scripture. Remember that when the Lord Jesus Christ was talking, he says concerning the scripture, he says the, the word of God, the scripture that cannot be broken, that cannot be nullified, that cannot be made inoperational. The scripture that cannot be broken. The scripture cannot be broken. And then what is the scripture? We have already showed Genesis to Revelation. They were all given by inspiration. And we have that information from 2 Timothy. We are reading chapter 3 and verse 16. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and we read verse 16 and verse 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. God inspired the writers. Please take note of this. Let no person deceive himself. God inspired the writer of Genesis. Moses is credited to have written the book of Genesis. 
Moses was not there in the day of creation. Moses was not in the garden. Moses' father had not been born. Moses' grandfather had not been born. But he was inspired. He had information. He didn't say, I think. He said, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then he gave the summary. And then he gave the details. And on and on. And then the book of Exodus. And so on and so forth. And then you come to the book of Psalms. And every book that we are talking about, now the Gospels, they are all given by inspiration of God. And they are profitable for doctrine. In, in, inside them, you find doctrine. You find doctrine that is what to keep, what to believe. Doctrine is what to believe. What you have to believe and what you have to accept and what you have to confess. Be profitable for doctrine, for reproof. The Bible the lines of the scripture corrects, gives you reproof, rebuke. And then, and also, it gives you correction. The correction can be direct or indirect. You know, when you read some bad thing that happened in the Bible, then it is giving you information that you should not go and do that. When you read the good thing that happened in the Bible, it's giving you information that you should go and do that. You should go and follow suit. Everything is documented for our learning. And then for the proof of correction and instruction in righteousness. That the man of God, the child of God, may be perfect, thoroughly furnished, thoroughly equipped unto all good works. Every line of scripture is true. And um, works wonders. Every line of scripture is true and works on every line. Go to the gospel according to St. John. You know what it says? In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. The same word was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. That's information. Glorious information. In the beginning, in the beginning of creation, in the beginning of the universe, not the beginning of God, he said that was the word, capital letter word, W-O-R-D. And he said the word was with God, meaning that that word was a person sitting side by side with God. And he said the same was in the beginning with God. By him all things were made, showing you that that personality, that spirit being that he called the word, is uh, the word of God inside him and uh, living outside him. That's great information. That great information and goes on and goes on and eventually tells us that that word metamorphosed, translated, became a human being, was uh, translated into the womb of a woman and he became a child there and disappeared from the right hand side of the majesty on high. And then became a child and was born like a child and grew up like a child. And the world was made flesh and it dwelt among us. And we saw he beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten son of God, full of grace and truth. Now, every line is true. Every line that is talking about miracles is true. When you engage, it will give you the miracle. Every line that is talking about protection is true. When you engage, it will give you the protection. Every line that is talking about doctrine is true. When you engage, you become a child of God. Every line that tells you about how to become a child of God is true to the letter. When you engage that line, you become a child of God. Let me give you an instance. I was not a child of God until... Until February 1975, 45 years ago or so, I was not a child of God. I was a religious person. I was serving at mass, but I didn't know my left from my right. But then, at the age of nine, I was desiring to know the Lord. At the age of nine, 1953, when I was in Standard One. But the Lord saw me. He didn't allow that thing to happen at that time. I suppose that if it had happened at that time, they would have taken me to the soothsayer, to the native doctor, to say that I was crazy. But then, in 1975, the thing that I desired in 1953 came to me. That was regeneration. And my mind changed. And the things that I liked, I couldn't light again. Are you there? 
Every line of scripture is true. So I know right now that there is something called being born again genuinely. Regeneration by the Spirit of God through repentance of dead words and Jesus coming into your life. So I know it, it is true. Somebody may be arguing and saying it is not true. Somebody has said some, some person, some I don't care lady said some time ago and I read in the newspaper and he said, I don't believe all that Bible stuff. I said, piteous woman. I looked at the person, I said, a pitiable person. You don't believe the Bible stuff. My friend, you are going to believe, be a believer, but it will be late. I suppose that you should know that the man that was full of dentists, the rich man that didn't bother about God, he was doing that because he was filled with a lot of goodies and he, he sobbed in plenty of things and, uh, and then he was enjoying his life. He didn't bother about God. But at the end of the day, he became a believer. It was late and then he began to recognize Abraham as father. But it was late. That's what, what Jesus told us in Luke's gospel uh, in chapter 16, I think. Now, now I said, uh, this individual that is saying that, meanwhile, uh, you are full of yourself. And you say, I don't believe, but listen to me. You believe when, don't believe when it is late. Come back to what I am saying. I am simply saying to you that every line of scripture, God has promised that we make them real and make them to be walking wonders. I want to give you a few examples of people that understood that every line of scripture is real and works wonders. And then I'll be done. And I'll be done. And give you some, uh, some practical instances of things that happened in times past. Let's see what happened when Israelites had gone astray, gone astray so badly. They had made the calf and decided to worship the calf as God. But then, and the Lord decided to do something. The Lord decided to do something against them. In Exodus chapter 32, look at what God said. And the Lord said unto Moses, that is in Verse 9, I have seen these people, and behold, it's a stiff-necked people. Now, therefore, let me alone that, I may, that my rod may wax hot against them, and that I may consume them, and I will make of thee a great nation. And Moses besought the Lord his God and said, Lord, why do thy rod wax hot against thy people which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Wherefore should the Egyptians speak and say, For me sheep did he bring them out to slay them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from thy fierce wrath and repent of this evil against thy people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, thy servants, to whom thou swearest by thine own self and saidst, Unto them I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven and all this land that I have spoken of will I give unto your seed and they shall inherit it forever. That was the argument that Moses made. He was quoting what God said unto Abraham in Genesis chapter 13. After that Lord separated from Abraham and he said look to the left. And to the right, to the, for, for the, to the front and uh, to the back. I give you all the land of Canaan into which you have come. And then you will inherit it and your children will inherit it. And when this man of God, Moses, uh, now was faced with this uh, situation, he quoted those scriptures. He knew that the scriptures will hold to the letter. And then he quoted it to God and God changed his mind. Oh, Lines of scriptures, they are true. When you anchor to them, when you quote them, when you argue with them, they will yield you the dividend. They will give you that which thou hast desired and which is written in them. Can I give you another in instance in the Bible? You know that uh, in uh, Isaiah chapter 1, 
when the Lord was rebuking Israel for having gone astray, in fact, he called them people of Sodom and Gomorrah. He termed them people of Sodom and Gomorrah because their iniquities were to the high mountains. But he now said, come, let's reason to go there. Though your sins be red like crimson, though your sins be as scarlet, though they be red like crimson, I will make them as white as snow, which means he will forgive. Now I want to inform you that is there, and then you may have known the depths of Satan. Into occultism you have re remained for a very long time, into witchcraft, into murder, into bloodletting, into everything, into marooning. Every evil is with you, into adultery, into fornication, into everything evil. Now, but I am telling you that every line of scripture is true, and you can become a cleansed person on the basis of what is written. Come now, let's reason together. Even though your sin be as scarlet, even though your sin be as red as crimson, he will make them as white as snow. That is what the Lord is saying, which means every line of scripture is true. May I inform you that he also said that every weapon formed against such shall not prosper. And every, every tongue that is raised up in judgment we shall condemn. This is the heritage of the children of God. What are we saying? There are people who say they are Christian, but they do not know the word of God's word. They do not make argument with the word. They do not pray the scriptures. But the people of old prayed the scriptures. Listen to me. I give you some physical instances of people who pray the scriptures. People who quoted the Bible and stood their ground on what is written and how it worked wonders for them. I know a man, a Dutch man, my, my friend, and then I used to stay in his house for two days, three days, while on my way to Israel. And at one point in time, this man being a big businessman, having a large printing press and publishing company, wanted to do an expansion on the land that is adjoined to his factory, to his, to his complex, in order to install more machines. And then there was this lady that was living by, by him. And then I would not want that ex expansion. You know what the lady did? The lady went to the local government of the, of the area and then made an argument against the man. And then the people now kept the drawings and they refused to approve the drawings because of uh, this lady's argument. But guess what? One of the days, the man was reading the Bible. And uh, reading the Bible and came and read from Acts of Apostles chapter 25 when Paul was being joined by Festus. And then at a point in time when Paul saw that everything was going awry, he said, I appeal to Caesar. And then he said, okay, to Caesar you will go. And when the man reached that point, listen to me attentively. When he reached the point, he said, okay, I will do exactly what Paul did. And then he went to the local government and then said, okay, I pay tax every year and then I have expansion to do and you are telling me that I will not do the expansion. Now I will appeal against you to the human rights organization. I immediately said that the chairman of local government said, don't appeal anything. Bring your papers for approval. The man applied what he saw in the scriptures. Let me tell you what happened to me as an individual. Before I got married, I had had an illness from 1965. Listen to me attentively. And then the illness was contagious. And then in 1972-73, the doctor that was attending to me in Lagos said, if this thing continues in you, you will not have any child. Now, in fact, he took my specimen and sent it to the, to the laboratory, even the lab scientist. And then the lab scientist called me into the microscope and then told me to look in. And I looked in and I saw some things swimming. And he said, many of them are dead. And now, if they continue like that, you don't have a child. And I became scared. By that time, I had not become a child of God. But then, suddenly, shortly, I became a child of God. And God now said, you have got to marry. And then I have no room to marry. And then I was saying, oh my God, 
Oh my God, so how do I transfer disease onto the woman that didn't do anything? So every day I took the scriptures. Listen to me. What scriptures? Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 4. He is the rock. His work is perfect. All his ways are justice and judgment. A God of truth without iniquity. Just and right is he. God of justice. And I said, God of justice. This woman did not do anything. And now I want to transfer sickness to the woman. It will not happen. And I continued making the argument. I have that day after day, day after day, day after day, day after day, until one of the days as I knelt down making the argument, a sensation occurred in my, in my system. And then I was wondering, what sensation is this? What's the, what's the reason for the sensation? And while I was wondering, I dozed off. And then in a short dream, I saw that a, a bad animal, a dangerous animal, was in a hole like the rabbit. And now a more dangerous animal, more dangerous than the one that is there, now tread that animal inside the hole and entered there and drove him out. And then I heard the voice saying, that is how the thing that is inside you has been driven out. How did it come? Scriptures were being read, were being, were, were, were being argued. That is it. Listen to me. The problem of some people who are Christians is this. They do not know that the Lord defers judgment. Like the judge, the magistrate. They do not know that sometimes he defers judgment. Do you, have you seen any case that came to court and the same day he comes to court, that is the same day they will give judgment? doesn't happen. They defer the case. They say we have postponed uh, or to so so that one week or two weeks or one, one, one month and so on and so forth. Because they have several cases and then the judge can be tired and then he needs to go and study. Go to his library to study in order to be able to, be able to give a proper judgment. Now God is not like those ones. He's not tired. He didn't need to go and study some law. No. But the first judgment in order to make you to pray more, to become better. In order to, to improve your skill, he defies judgment. And now when he defies judgment, something, some people chicken out and they will not continue the argument. But he defied my judgment, but I didn't chicken out by the grace of God and continued the argument until the deed was done. Oh, Things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose, Romans 8.28. What does it mean? If you are into any situation, uh, and the situation is very ugly, and the situation is very unappealing, and the situation is very sorrowful, listen to me. All things, all things, bad things, all things, good things, all things, things that cause sorrow, all things work together, work together for good to them that love God. The question is, what you need to find out is, do you love God? Are you a child of God? Are you one of the called according to his purpose? All things work together for good. When you stay on it, when you stay on it, you will see how that it will turn that bad thing into a good thing. How that good will come out of evil. How that a trauma will metamorphose into triumph. How the grief we met the most was into glory. I want to ask you a question. Did you know about Job? The Job that you read and you know about. Do you know that Job was enjoying his life? Do you know that Job was the richest person in the land where he was? Do you know that Job had a wealth? Do you know that Job was protected? Do you know that Job didn't have any problem? Do you know that Job had children, male and female? Do you know that Job was enjoying his life? Until one of the times uh, God taunted Satan. Listen to me. God is great. Satan did not know that it was taunting. Satan did not know that the thing that he was going to do was going to yield another chapter of Job. If he knew it, he would have not allowed the thing. He would have said, no, 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 no. Let's, let's, let's leave it there. And he taunted him. He didn't understand. Satan didn't understand what was going to come out. Job didn't understand. At the end of the day, you know that when Job's uh, possessions were lost and the children were lost in the first womb, now he bemoaned and said, why was I born? Why was now no steel bed? Why did I, my mother not miscarry? And then, but at the end of the day, evil turned to good. 
That is it. Now, what am I telling you? I am telling you that you have wealth in your hand. You have wealth in your hand. So, read it and make argument with it. Stay on it. Because God this time around said he will show that every line of scripture works wonders. Every line of scripture is true. If you have made a mistake and you committed sin, you remember that he said, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You remember that? Now, if you have uh, born a sinner and then you have turned from your sin and become a child of God, do you know that there is a possibility that uh, your mind will rise up in the course of time and begin to condemn you and begin to tell you, but you did so so thing. God cannot forgive you. The things that you did were very heinous. My friend, tell your mind to shut up. Listen to me. What you want to know is who said it. It's not what your mind is saying because your mind is grass because all men are grass. It is not what the devil is saying. The devil is accuser of the brethren and then if he accuses you, the devil is a liar. And then God does not take lies. What matters is what did God say? So he says every line of scripture is true. If you want progress, go to scriptures. And uh, let me branch and say to the people who are making some, who are making some, some uh, progress and they uh, say, I don't read Bible, but I make progress, I make progress, I work hard. Listen to me. You don't read Bible, but you are applying God's principle without knowing it. What principle are you applying? The principle that is in the Proverbs, he says, in all labor, there is profit. That's what is happening. If the principle was not given there, you will not make that profit. In all labor, there is profit. There are very many people that say, well, I don't believe in God. They believe in God, only that they refuse that they believe in God. They believe in God because they apply the principles, and the principles are working. Now, let me tell you. You say, I don't believe in God, but my family is intact, and my wife is with me. Why is your wife with you? Why has she not gone away? Why did she not go into adultery? Because you are being good. You cherish her. You are keeping the Bible. You are keeping the Bible that, is, uh, that you reject. You are keeping it. The only problem that you are going to have is that at the end of the day, because you did not believe the thing that you were keeping, and you benefited from the thing that you were keeping, then he will judge you. Now the thing will not be a judgment. You, you, you said I don't believe, but you were keeping it. And it was working for you. So don't tell me I don't believe the Bible. Don't tell me I'm progressing. I don't believe the Bible. What are you talking about? You will believe it. The principles, that is what you are applying. Now if you become somebody that, uh, that, is, uh, that gives, and then you like uh, to give people a philanthropic, people will like you. Because that's what the Bible says. Now, let me round up by telling every person that is out there, that is listening to me, this is a great time. And uh, we have uh, this time to enjoy, despite everything. Look at coronavirus pandemic. Hold on to scriptures. Hold on to this word. Hold on to this word. He says, if I pass through the fire, it shall not burn me. If I, sh I pass through the floods, it shall not do me any harm. Did you not hear the testimony of a lady, I think in America or somewhere, long, long ago, that uh, was there and a tornado came, a hurricane came and carrying houses. And the woman went and slept and said, God is alive at all times. God is awake. And why should I be awake? when God is awake. I should be sleeping because he's in charge. And then at the end of the day, the hurricane took away all the houses around her house and nothing happened to her house. Praise God. So 
I am telling you, we have given you the methodology even how to fish the fish and be having a lot of fishes on your table. Go to the scriptures. Every line, every line is true. Decode righteously, rightly, and use it. Look at the lessons directly. Look at the lessons that are indirect and use it. A lot of things can be said concerning this matter. But for the time being, because of our time, I urge you to hold on to what you have heard. Every line of scripture is true. And this time, even at this awful time, God will make every line of scripture to be true. What are you going to do right now? It is time to rise up uh, or fall down and uh, howsoever you want and then call upon the name of the Lord. It is time to call upon the name of the Lord. Pray unto the Lord. Whatsoever that is by you, whatsoever commotion, whatsoever problem, is your house having problem, your wife having problem, your children having problem, take hold on any word that addresses the issue and then pray with that word and you'll find that God will make that word work in your life. Every line of scripture is true. Jesus Christ is coming again and he must come. He has said it and he's coming. The angel said it and he's coming. Coming for the flock. The rapture is by the way. Forgiveness can be your Lord. Baptism with the Holy Ghost can be your Lord because it is written. Sanctification can be your Lord because it is written. Is there anybody that is saying, I will undo you? What you need to tell the person or what you need to tell the circumstance is that it is written in the scriptures that we are hid in Christ and Christ is hid in God. We want you to tune again next Tuesday and tune again during Easter period. Thank you, Lord of glory, because of your greatness. Thank you because you are wonderful. Thank you because of what is happening in the midst of the people and what will happen in the midst of the people. Even as begin to obey the Lord, even as begin to apply the implement, apply the knowledge they have got. Precious Father, across board, in every land, wherever they are, in Europe, in America, in South America, in North America, in Asia, in Middle East, in Africa, in Nigeria, wherever they are and wherever anybody is and has listened to this word and has begun to apply this principle, Lord, you are going to show that it is true to the letter. Thank you, my Father and my God, because you have done it. I see miracles happening in the houses. I see miracles happening among the youth. I see the Lord doing miraculous things because his word has been dished out by the Holy Ghost. I am not kidding. It is a thing that the Lord said, and that is what you do. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of a man that he should repent. As he said it, will he not do it? Has he spoken, will he not make it good? I have received the commandment to bless, and God has blessed, and I cannot reverse it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for your word. Thank you for inspiration. Blessings and glory be unto God and unto God alone and to Him alone. And let the blessings of the Lord and the joy of the Lord be the Lord of your people. Let the world come to attention. Let them come on their knees. Let every person name the name of the Lord. Thank you for answer to prayers. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we are praying. And every person out there, shout amen.